Hello, welcome to my channel and thank you very much for checking out this video. In uh, this video we'll be covering the FMGS, the Flight Management Guidance System. Now for a beginner the FMGS is uh, quite complicated and will take some time to get used to. So let's start off with the basic architecture of the FMGS. The two FMGCs, or Flight Management Guidance Computers, play a central part in the FMGS. Each FMGC is divided into two main parts. And like the name says, one of the parts is the Flight Management part and the other part is the Flight Guidance. The Flight Management part consists of features like Display Management, Navigation and the management of the navigation radios and of course uh, management of the flight planning. Also it gives predictions and uh, optimizes the performance of the aircraft. The flight guidance part commands the autopilot, the flight directors and the autothrust system. Pilots interact with the FMGS via the MCDU, the Multipurpose Control and Display Unit, or via the FCU, the Flight Control Unit. In the next few minutes I will explain to you how the FCU works and uh, how it is used. Now for the most part of the flight the Airbus is flown uh, fully managed meaning that the FMGC will optimize flight path and the speed with respect to all the data that the pilot has put into the FMS. Data like the flight plan, the wind data and the uh, so-called cost index. Now looking at the FCU you can uh, very quickly identify that the system presently is in the uh, managed mode. In the speed part of the FCU and also in the heading part of the FCU you can see dashes and the dot. And on the uh, PFD in the speed scale you can see a magenta triangle. This simply means that the speed target is given by the FMGC. You can see that on the uh, performance page. And the heading will be adjusted automatically in order to fly the given flight planned route. The FCU is only used for short-term interactions with the FMGS. These interactions are performed with the help of the knobs that you find on the FCU. The four knobs on the FCU can all be either pulled or pushed and of course uh, they can be turned to uh, interact with the FCU. A simple way to remember how the knobs are used is to say if you pull on the knob then it is your aircraft if you push the knob control of the flight path and speed is given to the FMGS okay so let's say air traffic control tells us to fly a certain speed the easiest and quickest way to do this is to just simply pull on the speed knob by doing so the speed display on the FCU will change from the dashed lines and the dot to the actual speed in numbers. You will also notice that the color of the triangle in the speed band will change from magenta to cyan. To change the speed you just turn the knob to the desired direction. The auto thrust now will change the thrust in order to meet the new speed target.
Now, to give the control back to the FMGS, you just simply push the speed button, causing the FCU display to show the dashed lines and the dot again, telling you that the speed now is managed again. Also note that the triangle in the speed band has changed back from cyan to magenta. The heading bug works in the same way. If you pull it, the dashed line and the dot will disappear and be replaced by the actual heading number. The FMA shows the title heading and a cyan triangle will appear on the heading part of the PFD. Also note that the flight plan track is replaced by dashes. To change the heading, you just simply turn the heading knob in one or the other direction. The aircraft will immediately adjust the bank to meet the new heading target. In order to give the lateral control back to the FMGS, you simply push the heading knob. The heading numbers will disappear, the dashed lines and the dot will reappear. And also on the FMA, you can see the mode change into NAV. Also the flight plan track on the navigation display will change back to a solid line. Next I will show you how to change the altitude using the managed mode and also the selected mode. So we have selected a climb to level 150 and start the climb by using the managed mode. So we push the altitude knob. Immediately you will see a dot appearing next to the altitude indicating that the climb is in a managed mode. Also the letters CLB i.e. climb appear on the FMA. The speed is managed to the most optimum climb speed, in this case 312 knots. In a managed climb, the FMGS will respect any altitude restrictions which are inserted into the flight plan. Now if you pull on the altitude selector, the climb will become selected, indicated by the disappearing dot and also by open climb on the FMA. Note that the speed, however, is still in the managed mode. Of course, you can take control of the speed yourself by pulling on the speed knob and change the speed by turning the speed knob in one or the other direction. This can be very helpful when you want to quickly increase or decrease the climb rate. Pushing the speed knob will of course engage the managed mode again. The last knob we want to have a look at is the vertical speed knob on the right side of the FCU. When you pull it, the climb rate will become selected and simply adjust the climb rate by turning the knob in the one or the other direction. Contrary to all the other knobs, pushing the vertical speed knob will just simply initiate a quick level off. So there is no managed guidance function by pushing it. Okay, so for the last part of this video, let's have a look at the managed descent function. Let's pretend we are getting a descent clearance to flight level 110. By pushing the altitude knob, you are commanding a managed descent. 
Since there is an altitude restriction at Natsu waypoint of level 130, you can see on the primary flight display level 130 in magenta is displayed instead of level 110 in uh, cyan. This means that the autopilot will automatically level off at level 130 and respect that altitude restriction. When uh, using the Manage Descent function, you can see some more symbols um, on the primary flight display speed band. The target speed is uh, as usually displayed by a magenta triangle. And uh, above that and below that, you can see magenta strips. That indicates the Econ speed range for the descent. The function of the Econ speed range will be explained in another video, since it's uh, a little bit complicated. So the aircraft is approaching the altitude uh, level constraint at uh, 13,000 feet. And you'll notice that the uh, flight management guidance system will command a level off. Okay, now we're in the altitude constraint capture mode and the aircraft will level off. Okay, so let's pretend the air traffic controller tells us that we can ignore the altitude constraint and continue our descent. By simply pulling on the altitude knob, the aircraft will go into the open descent mode and ignore the constraint at 13,000 feet. Please note the indications that are now visible on the uh, primary flight display. The selected flight level is now in cyan and uh, ALT is displayed as the armed mode in the FMA. Open descent is a very simple mode. Auto thrust is commanded to idle and the speed is just managed by adjusting the pitch of the aircraft. Of course, you can uh, simply get back to the managed descent mode by pushing the altitude knob. The FMA shows the descent as the active vertical mode and on the speed scale you can see the Econ speed range again. As commanded, the aircraft will now level off at level 110. So this concludes this video. I do hope uh, you've enjoyed watching it. And maybe you've learned a thing or two about the FMGS. And as always, Thanks a lot for watching this video and see you in the next one.